The Yamaha MT125 is a highly refined 125cc bike. What I mean by that is that unlike many other bikes with this capacity, it features uh, 15 brake horsepower, 4 valve water cooled engine, front and rear disc brakes, upside down forks, as well as Michelin Pilot Street tyres. Having covered 5,000 miles on it, I thought I'd share my thoughts. Let's start with the basics, ergonomics. It works well for me. I'm 5 foot 11 and the seating position achieves comfort at both city and dual carriageway speeds. However, in my case, the seat becomes uncomfortable when making a longer journey. When doing so, the bike is capable of cruising at the national speed limit provided there is no headwind. Steering is stable and decisive due to the relatively high fork angle. This gives it a light feel at slow speeds and fully connects you with the road when travelling faster. However, the turning circle is not enough to do a U-turn on a single track road. From the suspension to the brakes, the bike inspires confidence as a learner and allows the rider to increasingly test their ability. Personally, I use the bike for city commuting and general purpose travel. Part of the reason that I own it is because of the low running costs. The insurance premium is good due to the bike being fitted with ABS, it does 100 miles per gallon and the annual maintenance costs are as little as owning a pet hamster for a month. This results in a highly cost effective means of transport once you've got over the short term costs. Moving on to its day to day features, it has what Yamaha call the high tech cockpit area LED instrument panel which redefines the meaning of speedometer. It gives you the basics plus a clock, two trip meters, trip time, average speed, distance to service as well as an instant and average MPG. Not that that's needed. Talking of LED, the bike features a decorative one at the front and a red one at the back. In terms of maintenance, the two most important things are an oil and filter change every 3,500 miles and keeping the chain tensioned and lubed. One should pay attention to the periodic maintenance and adjustment in the owner's manual. The front and rear brake pads are relatively easy to replace, however in my experience the rear wheel needs to be removed for access to rear brake caliper. As this is a premium bike holding a high value, it will want to be nicked. The use of security devices and a chain goes without saying. In terms of mods, I've done two of them. Firstly, I've fitted a top box. Its primary purpose is for helmet storage upon arrival, but it's also useful for transporting chips. I believe the top box is an excellent addition and hardly affects the performance and handling. The second modification is heated grips. As this is a commuter bike used all year round, I've accounted for cold weather. A separate video displays an installation and review. In conclusion, if you're in a position to buy this bike, I would highly recommend it. When buying a Japanese bike in general, you, you can expect to rely on the parts, and that's certainly the case with this bike. However, if you do need to buy spare parts, there's a huge used market uh, on online platforms such as eBay. Overall, I've had two main problems with it. So the first problem is the fact that the chain constantly needs adjusting. Uh, I think that's down to the fact that it's a non-O-ring chain, so I'd highly recommend to get an O-ring chain where apparently they go for miles without having needing adjustment. The second problem is the fact that the rear brake caliper is really hard to gain access to. Uh, I found that you have to actually remove the rear wheel uh, because basically this mechanism allows the caliper to open uh, to tilt upwards and it just scratches the frame and it doesn't work so you have to remove the whole wheel and, and faff about with it more. But apart from those two simply minor details you won't be disappointed. I think the most rewarding thing about owning this bike is the fact that you can cruise at 70 miles an hour at 8,000 RPM. Uh, you've still got 2,000 RPM to overtake and have a peace of mind that you're not revving the nuts off it. I've just been to get my bike MOT'd and uh, there's no getting by the fact that you will spend money on tyres, consumables and owning a motorcycle is uh, an expense. There's no getting by that fact. But in conclusion to the conclusion, if you compare this bike to your stock CBT bikes, a Yamaha YBR 125, uh, Honda CBF 125, what you're getting out of this bike is a premium experience. And if you're willing to pay for that, then great. Uh, you will not be disappointed.